coming to the next portion of this unit that is species what are the species the species are those organisms which are having similar kind of genetic material similar kind of appearance you can see and these species can be classified according to their role in the ecology or in the environment you can say so these species are divided in multiple different species or types you can say according to their role the very first type of species that you can see here is the flagship species flagship species if i give you example the example of the flagship species so suppose if you go to the bengal forest so what would be the flagship species for the bengal forest so that is going to be bengal tiger if i go to uh, suppose african forest so what would be the what can be the flagship species flagship species can be there as african elephants so similarly every kind of environment or every type of habitat have their kind of species through which that habitat can be known because that species is providing a kind of identification or kind of name to that particular habitat so that can be called as flagship what is the meaning of flagship we use the flagship term in the daily world as well we call flagship mobile phone flagship laptop so what is the meaning of flagship flagship means top of the notch top of the notch means best of the best you can say so best of the best species can be only termed as the flagship species which is providing name to that particular habitat so understand this topic as this flagship word so for example flagship species of bengal tiger panthera tigris this is a species that is selected to act as an ambassador or icon or symbol for a defined habitat issue campaign or the environmental cause it is providing icon or symbol to that area and it would be act as a ambassador so these would be called as the flagship species if i give you example of ganga river dolphins so ganga river dolphins are known to only available fresh water dolphins all over the world in the ganga river so they are providing a name or fame to the ganga river so the ganga dolphin can be tagged as a flagship species of the ganga river because it is providing name or fame to that ganga river and it is acting as a ambassador of the ganga river So similarly, in every area or the every habitat, you can find out few species which are providing icon, symbol, or acting as an ambassador of that area. So that all species can be termed as flagship species. Next, keystone species. Keystone species, as in the name, you can see, is key or very important. You can say keystone means a kind of having peculiar character or it is a kind of very important having. keystone species is species that plays an essential role in the structure functioning or productivity of that habitat or ecosystem at a defined level so that is species you can say sorry that is species you can say which is acting very very essential or important on that particular area for the functioning and productivity of that area so without that species there would be multiple problems and maybe the ecosystem cannot survive there the disappearance of such species may lead to significant ecosystem change which may have effects on a broader scale so that all species which are playing such a role these all can be called as keystone species coming to the next species indicator species indicator species as in the name you can see this is indicator it means this will define something this will indicate something indicate what this can indicate anything maybe level of pollution maybe the level of the soil quality or soil health maybe the level of water anything they can indicate so that species which is indicating something that can be denoted or that can be termed as the indicator species a indicator species is a species or a group of species chosen as an indicator of a proxy for an ecosystem or of a certain process within that ecosystem for example lichens lichens what indicates by the lichens so lichens generally indicates the pollution level in the environment and especially the sulfur pollutants so if there is a sulfur pollution the lichens can tell you in the environment there is a sulfur pollution because in the presence of sulfur they cannot survive so here lichens are acting as a indicator for the level of sulfur present in the 
atmosphere or the level of the pollution present of by the sulfur in the environment so that's why the lichens can be termed as indicator species another type of species the fourth type that we have to discuss is the linked species what are the linked species the linked species is a species which is a mediator between living and non living things if i give you example of virus virus is what the virus is a kind of linked species linked of what linked of living and non living material similarly another example are mycorrhiza association between fungi and roots which provides phosphate to roots so these can be termed as linked these are providing some kind of mediator or link between the living or non living things so these all can be termed as linked species so that was all about the different kinds of species next term that we have to discuss is the ecosystem till now we have only discussed the ecology ecology is the study of the eco study of the environment what is the ecosystem so ecosystem is a functional unit of nature about complex interaction between the biotic and non biotic or non living components biotic means living abiotic means non living so how these two are interacting in the system system means a particular boundary or area so how these two things are interacting with each other so that can be studied with the help of ecosystem study the word first time coined by ag tensley in the year 1935 so you can see that ecology term is older than this ecosystem term ecosystem was termed after the on cycle that was termed by the ag tensley in the year of 1935 now we have discussed the components of ecosystem so as i have told you in the ecosystem we study the interaction of two different ecosystem that is the biotic component and abiotic component so that's why the component of ecosystem is divided in two types biotic and abiotic in abiotic all the non living things come for example air water wind soil temperature rainfall these all are the different abiotic components then in the biotic components all the living organisms comes under the biotic components the biotic components is further divided in three different categories one is called as producers another one is called as consumers and another type of called is decomposer so producers what are the producers so producers produce their own food so all that organisms which are having chlorophyll which can do photosynthesis in the environment to produce their food by their own that all can be termed as producers for example all the plants so these all would be the producers of the biotic component then we have consumers level consumers are those which are getting food directly or indirectly from the producers itself consumers are again divided in three types primary consumer secondary consumer tertiary consumer primary consumers are vegetarian you can say or getting energy by feeding on these producers so those all would be primary consumers for example all the vegetarian animals you can say for example deer cow buffalo zebras these all are the primary consumers directly consuming the plants you can say and have ability to digest them then secondary consumers secondary consumers are those consumers which are getting their food requirement or energy requirement from the primary consumer so they will eat the primary consumers so those all would be the secondary consumers for example you can take dog so you can take the foxes so those all would be the secondary type of consumers and then we have the tertiary consumers tertiary consumers can take their food from secondary consumer or maybe primary consumers so these are the predators you can say which are directly taking food from the primary or maybe secondary consumer based on the availability for example these are complete non vegetarian kind of animals which are feeding on the meat directly so lion tiger these all are the tertiary consumers or the last 
uh, step of the food chain or the food web you can see then we have the decomposers decomposers are what decomposers all are the microorganisms these are doing decomposition in the below the soil zone you can see or on the environment you can see so after a death of the producers or maybe consumers when they go to the soil layer so decomposers will decompose them into different nutrient types so those all would be the decomposers of the ecosystem now this is the another concept of standing crop and standing state now crop word we use for the living organisms while the state word we use for the inorganic or non living organisms so here the meaning of standing crop would be the amount of living material existing in each tropic level at a given time that can be called as standing crop of that particular ecosystem or environment or that area you can see it may be expressed in terms of number of individuals or may be biomass of that all individuals may be energy content present in per unit area so these all terms or units can be used to define the standing crop and what is the standing state this is the amount of inorganic nutrients found in an ecosystem at a given time this can be called as standing state it represents part of all non living materials and it circulates between the living and non living components of the ecosystem so standing state is your all inorganic component or non living component while standing crop is your all living component or living material of that all area that is standing crop and standing state by any particular ecosystem so these two words also be clear about them the next thing that we have to discuss is the multiple environmental factors that can affect the productivity of any ecosystem so the environmental factors that can affect productivity of the ecosystem are solar radiation and temperature the moisture will also affect the productivity of the ecosystem how much nutrition is present higher would be the nutrition higher would be the productivity or production biotic activities if there is any competition or no competition there is any kind of harmful thing is present or not that all would be the biotic activities that can also affect your productivity impact of the human population human population can be very much effective to to just harm the environment you can say or just reduce the productivity or production because there would be very high exploitation of resources whenever there would be impact of human population so that is how the productivity can be affected in presence of the human population if any forest is undisturbed or not touched by the human so there would be very high productivity if continuous harvesting is present there by the human so there would be very low productivity then if we talk about the aquatic ecosystem aquatic ecosystem the depth is very important factor we have seen in the first unit that the light can penetrate up to 200 meters only after that or 250 meter maximum you can say after that there is no penetration of light and if there would be no penetration of light then there would be no photosynthesis if there is no photosynthesis then there would be no production at all so depth in aquatic ecosystem is very important near the surface there would be high production possible and below the 200 meter 250 meter height there is no production takes place this primary productivity of the world's major ecosystem this we will discuss at the end of this unit when we complete all the biomes and all the things then only we can discuss the primary productivity of all the world's major ecosystem which one is highest which one is the lowest so wait for that right now the next thing we have to discuss is the food web what is the food web so this is nothing this is just combination of multiple food chains so here there would be no linear um, movement of the energy you can say there would be web like structure that will create by the combination of multiple food chains so here there would be trophic levels in an ecosystem these are not linear rather they are just interconnected with each other 
and make a food web food web is a network interconnected the multiple food chains existing in an ecosystem one animal may be member of several different food chains food webs are more realistic energy flow models as compared to the food chains why because in the real world there would be always multiple organisms interacting with each other there is no such condition only one organism is interacting with another organism you can say that food chains are not realistic while the food webs are more realistic in the real world here the example of food web you can see here the sun is there the plants are getting sunlight from the sun then these are eaten by the leech worms the leech worms can be eaten by the robins the birds birds can directly eat the seed of the plants as well here directly then the merlins or the scavengers can eat the birds they can each eat directly the worm as well and then the plants are eaten by the rabbits the rabbits can be done or eaten by the wolves wolves can also eat the robin so that kind of complex structure is present in the real world that is what the food web is always remember that whether it is food web or it is food chain always the flow of energy would be unidirectional once the energy comes to the plant from the plant it is goes to the leech worm from the leech worm it is going to bird maybe higher bird the energy cannot go back energy would be always flow in a unidirectional or linear way the flow of energy is only in one way not in both way the nutrients will come mm -hmm. again to the soil and that can be again taken by these plants these plants can go again by the leech worms or the robins or the merlins but the flow of energy is always unidirectional so that one thing you have to always remember 